10, 10, 10, 10. That is a relic. Anyone need a Makuni? Look at that. I'm gonna get some cabeza. Here's some pepper. Here we go. What's going on guys and welcome back to the vlog. So you saw in the last one, the mic didn't work for like a whole day of filming and I was pretty gutted, pretty let down. You guys need to see what we were working on and hear a little bit about the direction we're going with the soft tail brake arm. So I'm gonna head inside. We're gonna get to that and see what uh, Juan's got on his computer, what he's been working on. Let's check it out. I let them know how gutted I was. I think I was more gutted than you were. So we're gonna kind of play that back. And I had one pull off the 3D printed part and kind of show you how we got to this and what we're working on and what's next on this project. All right, so this is kind of like the stand I used so I could uh, 3D scan it. As you can see, some of you may recognize this is a riser off a of low rider. Stock low rider. Yeah, but we just needed a jig to get it off the ground. Our 3D scanner we use is a Peel 3D. Basically, Juan grabs his scanner, it's connected to the computer, and then he's able to scan the product like so. So then that way we can verify that the dimensions, all the clearances we need are accurate. And the big part of that is how we can design and develop a better brake arm. You can see some of the flaws that we don't like about it, and I'll tell you right now, the initial flaw. This is the washer that sits on the outside of the brake arm. And you can see it's scraped and bent. And that is the first point of contact when you lean the soft tail over too far, it hits on your brake arm right there. We took that into consideration while we were designing this. Right, so from the 3D scan, we were able to import the actual data into SolidWorks. That's what we have here, that's the stock one. And then uh, we get full range of motion, like get to see every detail of the stock one. And Juan, how many years of schooling and how many years of also in the field have you been playing with basically this system, this program to be able to even do this? This isn't something that I can just hop on the computer and do. This is something that he went to school many, many years and has even after school a lot of years to be able to do this. So this isn't, yeah. this is almost like one of those things you see on uh, Instagram. It's like, not like how fast you can do the job for what you're paid, yeah. but how many years it took you to master the job to do it so well, right? so smoothly. I mean, you kind of experience that when you're back flipping, right? Yeah. You make it look easy, but they don't see the five years it took the, you to the three crashes that I initially yeah. did. My first one was under rotated. My second one I landed, my third one I over rotated. And then there was probably 10 more crashes after that, which I showed you guys on two vlogs ago. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna use that as a reference point. Obviously, like you mentioned, we were having some scraping issues on washer here. So we're just gonna keep that in, into consideration. And then obviously I'm, I'm just gonna show the, what we have yeah. now. There's a lot of work that went into getting there. So you can see the other one sticks out past ours. Yeah, so the blue is the stock one. And then also it had the washer which hung out even more. Washer was larger diameter than this piece. So we cleared up all that area just to make sure we're not gonna yeah. scrape there. So then we cleared all that area. So then we figured the next point of scraping, if that's gone, would probably be the flat. So for now, we're testing it with um, a scrape plate on the bottom. And we would make that out of Delron, which is a plastic. And then that would create a smoother effect when you ever do lean the bike over and scrape your arm, your brake arm. Not only would it create a smoother effect, like as you're dragging through the corner, it wouldn't be as abrupt when you hit yeah. the ground, but it also would uh, make it to where you don't scratch your brake arm. You're scratching a piece of plastic that's uh, much cheaper to replace. Yeah. And also if it's a black, black piece of Delron, when you scratch it, it won't be like scratching the paint off or, you know, bending your washers. Any gnarly damage. Yeah. So it was interesting because when I rode this bike, I kept on, we went to like, we went on a canyon and I couldn't tell where I was scraping it. But cause like I wasn't looking for it here. I was looking for a peg or something. Yeah. And it wasn't until we started working on this that I realized like, oh shoot, it was scraping here the whole time. Like it's yeah. gnarly. The, I think the next step is we're gonna talk to our buddy Rob and have him machine some stuff for us. And then I, I want to put this to the test. Like we'll put it on one of the bikes and yep. then see if you or myself could scrape it. See how it is, like make sure it's smooth. It doesn't pick the bike up. Make sure it doesn't do anything weird. Yep. Um, but I think that's gonna be the next step. So grab the 3D printed one. You guys saw we pulled this out of the 3D printer on the last one. This is the part kind of assembled and ready. So let's go throw it on the bike, show them, you know, how it works on there. And, and again, I've said it in the last one, but this, this plastic is actually strong enough to where we can throw this on the bike and actually ride it and get a decent idea. Now you wouldn't wanna go on a 
all day ride or anything like that, but just like in the parking lot at slow speeds, kind of just playing with it and, and making sure that um, it does work the way we need it to before we go to actual prototype uh, with billet aluminum. Yeah, I think the most important thing for me uh, with the plastic part is checking clearances, making sure that, you know, it's not gonna hit anywhere we don't expect it to see, like in 3D model, like we don't have the whole bike here. So yep. uh, we're gonna triple check all the clearances and stuff like that. And yeah, we could probably ride it and do a little bit of testing. And then yeah, I think the next thing we'll be is uh, make it out of metal. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's go throw this on the bike. What's up, bro? The DX. Tommy, are you gonna ride that thing or what? I've got some plans for it today. We're gonna keep working on the brake arm, but we're gonna go ride this thing and we're gonna start making some upgrades to it. And I do have some plans. We're gonna take you guys somewhere special right down the street. Juan's never been. I'm gonna show him something cool. But first, let's go play with this. There may be a possibility that we will have a linkage for it. But right now, we're verifying the brake arm before we go too far. So as you can see, as he's installing it, this matches our shifters that we have on um, the Softail model and all of our models, really all of our shifter models. Are we gonna ride it or no? We're 100% gonna try it. All right. Well, we'll see if we can stop the bike without front brake. How about that? Yeah. The brake arm right now, it does work. Looks pretty sweet. Right now with the red shifter tips uh, matching and the shift arm and the brake arm both also matching. I'm gonna come over here. Boom, look at that. TSC USA. Made in USA. I don't know if that's even coming on the camera, but T Lightning won't see with the USA. I may see if we can bump that up just like inch or three quarters of an inch so that it's actually visible and not hidden under the foot peg mount. You engineered it. You go test it. We'll park your car like this <laughs> and we'll park and we'll have the bike back brake only. We'll see yeah, if we can right. stop it. Don't waste it, bro. Bike stead shows you how much we ride this thing. We're going to bump it real quick. Turn the light on. We'll leave it on the tender and when we All come right. back, it should start. We'll test this thing later on in the video. I at least want to saw about the pipe. You want to change the pipe. Yeah. But I want you to ride it or us to ride it a little bit more stock. Okay. And the surprise for you is that I did mention to Juan earlier on that Makuni is actually only a mile away from Drash and Supply. They actually have their own street name which is really rad. Buddy of mine works over there. I've known him for many, many years. We're gonna swing by there, grab an HSR 42, and show you guys the shop. They got some old cool relics, kind of when Makuni was big in the 80s and 90s. They have this, they have a lot of cool stuff to check out over there. So I wanna take Juan over there, show him that shop, grab a carb for it. I think we do the little engine overhaul and try to throw the carb on it, throw the new pipe on it today, see if it runs any better, and maybe throw some fresh gas in it. I think we should also grab some oil while we're out on the road, do a little oil change, throw a carb on it, throw a pipe on it, and see if the bike runs any better by the end of the day. So uh, they're, in, they're not in order, but from the 90s, yep. 1992, from the early 2000s, 2001, yep. so 2012, so then 10 years later, and then 2022, 10 years later, and then some weird electric bike in the shop which is like futuristic. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool that there's like every 10 years we have each model from an Evo. Obviously these were both twin cams, Milwaukee 8. Obviously this thing's torn apart, but I thought that was pretty freaking cool. Wait, is this is 92? Yeah. Oh shit. Let's pull this out. Also your bike has bags on it right now so we can throw some oil in it. Yeah, baby. Which one you want to ride this morning? The new one. All right. On this bike, you gotta kind of prime it a little. Give it like that, like two little twists. Not too many. Early model Dyna, late model Dyna. We're hit. We're hitting a taco run right now. Where? We're gonna go, uh, what's that spot called, Juan? Hey, I'm Lawrence, I watched their videos. Got me excited about riding my bike again. I've got a Harley FXLR, oh, 92, yeah. man. 92? Yeah. Evo, Evo Dyna? It's in one of the extensions, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's probably no better. Yeah. Hey, man, thanks for saying what's up. What? Pardon me. Hope that was a good porno shot, or a pano shot, whatever you said. Thing was low. He's like, oh, there's like a half tank. We almost put four gallons in. I'm sure it's only a four and a half gallon tank. And he said that if it's a full tank, the gas gas gauge works. Your baby short clutch sucks. I hate it. All Gabe spikes have a shorty lever. Yeah, whatever. 
almost didn't start. They've been here so long, and this is like the only thing on this street. So they got the street named after them. That's pretty That's sick. That's sick. Yeah. Ima I've, I've driven by it so many times, I never saw it. Like yeah. Imagine if that was Thrashing Ave. Cooney Ave right there. My buddy Steve has been working here. I know he's been working here for 10 years. He's gonna let us in the back doors. We're gonna check out some cool stuff. They got some bikes they built from like the 90s. There's some cool stuff to check out, you know, when they were in their heyday. There's some engines on stands and pallets of carburetors. And Bakuni is like big in, I think like aerospace stuff. Worldwide company. And this is just one of like their 10 offices. Bro, he's lost. He looks. Oh, there Steve, you are. Hey, guys. how you doing? Good, Good. how are this, you? This is my buddy Juan. How's hey Juan, Juan, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice so, to meet you. Uh, so we just grabbed this 2001 Harley Dyna, popping and spitting. And the we figured, usual. Yeah, we figured rather than try to rebuild it and tune that, we're just gonna go to a McCoonie. All right, get it going. Well, come on in. I was, telling, I was telling Juan a little bit about how basically McCoonie is a lot more than carburetors. We do everything, fuel pumps, water pumps. Fuel injection. Is there aerospace stuff? Yeah, we got aerospace too. We import, export aerospace products. And also you guys have like different warehouses. Yeah, we have factories all over the world. Yeah. And we've got another location in Chicago, which handles all the OEM. Gotcha. Product. Yeah. Polaris, Articat. Still have the bikes in the dyno room, the old dyno. Old dyno room, right down the street, That's dude. <laughs> yeah, what, what era was that kind of running at? Oh God. Probably 70s, 80s. Well, McCoonie's been in Northridge, California since the 70s, running dynos for Harleys, motorcycles. This used to be R&D, all R&D, but now it's gone into the... Now Wait till you see these bikes have Bassani exhausts on them that are past the back tire. They're no like way. early 90s Bassani exhausts. I want to take these things out. Juan is an old relic kind of guy. Oh. He likes old stuff like this. Oh, snap. A little dusty. That's what makes it even cooler. Wait, these aren't even the bikes. No, this is well. Where's the Bassani pipes? Well, the one with the Bassani that had, I think it was a road rage on it. Yeah. Um, that one I bought. You bought it. Where and is it? And then I started to go through it at another neighbor that wanted it, and I'm like, see ya. I wanted to buy that thing. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Should have called me. So this one's there completely you know. stock Evo motor. Okay. That's got a screaming eagle, it's got a bigger motor. And then this one we built for dyno shootouts. It had some horsepower deal on uh, record for a short time before it blew up. So this one's currently blown up. Do you guys use them anymore? Or are they just kind of hanging out? They have not been run in so long. What is it, dude? It's a DX. Do we need this gas gauge? <laughs> yeah, we'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy the tank off of it. Yeah, the tank's clean. Yeah. yeah. So look, this is one of the dynos. Yeah, so this is, uh, we dropped that in the ground. You know, normally they're like up on our right, 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 right. So we just sunk it in the ground. Hey Juan, how's this computer? The you tuning not, computer, bro. It's, it's mad just fine. Right, chill. Here, let me get a little dyno run. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, though. Our own still rolls. Yeah. And then this is what we used to run them on. Put a bike on it, they'd strap it down. Even for like break-ins, we have a huge fan that they'd run in here. Just they'd run it for a little bit. Run on that thing. We could run cars on it, everything. And we'd put a Suzuki engine mount it on the stand, you just run the engine off the dyno. So that's how Juan claims all of his Mustang horsepower and torque? No. He I tries to claim at the, wheel. At the crank, no. not at the wheel. <laughs> the rear wheel is the number we all use here. What's this, dude? This is for Juan. This is more your speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah but this thing actually shows the foot pounds yeah. Yeah. of torque. That is a relic, bro. This wow. is awesome. This, this should be like a museum. I know. And how long has it been sitting here with a towel over it? He can put all this stuff to good use. <laughs> <laughs> the one bike that I tried to buy off of, he, he sold to his neighbor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 13. Last year they were all registered. But there were some flaws. It was just like, ah, it doesn't work. We're doing like kit development. So we're doing all Revo kits mostly for yeah. like all the different carbs that are out there. Party's one of our biggest markets. Yeah. Yes. So many of, I think they ran and heart rated up to like Forever. 2005, 2006. Yeah. They ran them so long that, I mean, it's to the point 
point now that guys that have bikes with carburetors, even if they bought a 42, they're now replacing it again with a new 42. Right. Down the road. What do you think? Can you imagine being on the R&D team, Stoneworks team here in the Yeah, 80s? with a race motor connected to the like <laughs> scale thing, getting the. So when they would put the motor in there, you don't want to be inside of there, right? Cause right. Be no, you'd stay here. And then you would throttle up. <laughs> the, the building would shake. Okay. It was just, it was bitch. Freaking rad. Yeah, carbs we're playing with. The counterfeits? We get counterfeits. And, and, and how different are they? They're quite a bit different. They've got steel pistons in them. Jets are wrong. We've seen the top covers have big gaps. There you go. Uh -huh. Got the cutaway, but... Is this a choke? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Air screw. Oh, you're gonna make it run lean, bro. Yeah. Chill out. Oh, there you go. You can see the whole... See, look, we need a display like this for the... Right, right. Shows the slide, you can see it. Yep. One time I flew to Europe, I used to take my carburetors with me for my old 250F Hondas, oh. and they had two big of carburetors on them. So when I would ride freestyle and like get on the throttle hard, they would bog out. There was like no way to tune it out. So we would actually put a smaller carb on it oh. and it ran better. Tokyo Mods or something yeah. they were making them. I would bring the carburetor with me when I'd go to Europe and ride another bike. And one of the times I'd stuffed the carburetor with paper towels and then installed it with the paper towels in it. The whole bike, you know, air box, subframe, carburetor, and I'm sitting there in the pits like, oh, this thing start? Four hours at work and I forgot the paper towels and the carburetors. <laughs> <laughs> That's what jet lag will do to you. Yeah. Oh, there's this like big group of guys who go out and drag race. I mean, they're huge, it's huge group. Look at the Bassani. That's that, this is the bike I was talking about. This is the pipe makes more power. It's past the swing arm. Dude, that's gnar. They don't make that anymore, do they? No, they don't make this pipe. That's funny because that pipe makes the most horsepower. Look at, look at the, look at the bends on this thing. Down, under, around. Old Evo with the 45 on it. I wonder what cubic inch. This is an 88 inch motor. 88? Yeah, it's got branch heads. This is a good bike. This is a really good bike. A lot of fun to ride. I mean, this is the first time I've seen a lock in, in one of these. They still have this same end cap. This is locked. Did you see it? Built by Jesse James, was it? Yeah. Oh, damn. Wow. The bikes, dirt bikes, snowmobile. You guys make this for Harley currently just yeah. the throttle, or just the, the body. manifold and the throttle body? Mm hmm. Brad, display history of the company when you walk in. 1923 Makuni was founded. Crazy, look at the car. It shows more of their history, riding motorcycles, that says it's in the 50s. And then in 1975, they made the uh, Northridge office, which is where we are today. And look, you can see like no tree growth or anything like that as compared to what it looks like now. Vision 2023. The company was listed on the first section of Tokyo Stock Exchange. R&D factory in Chicago, a Mexico second factory completed. So pretty, pretty massive. Yeah. So what's this one? This is a 45? That's a 45 polished. Uh, polished? Oh, yeah. Dang. Wow. Yeah. That's 42. An easy for the Evo. Any would need a Makuni? We got him right here. So this will be the one, it's just like that, but without an air filter cover. So you need to run a, does that have like a Screaming Eagle or? It has, it has something a, on it. It's like one of those Foster Market ones. Like an R&D racing or something. Okay. I think it'll work. Yeah. It'll bolt up to this. Does it have the? Um, it comes with an adapter. adapter. Oh yep. yeah, as long as it has the adapter, I think we'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guarantee you the knockouts Cable don't have that. Cable loop. Yeah. This is your box adapter ring. Yep. There you go. Look at that. Fresh. It is cold. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a real Makuni. No, you need a choke? Yeah, um, yeah. I think so. Because you can put the stock choke cable oh, really? on. Oh, okay. So, but is the stock choke cable okay? it, It's on there. It's on there. I mean, it works. Yeah, so it works. all you do is you take the stock choke cable, pull okay. the spring and plunger off of it. And throw it in here. And put the spring and plunger that's in here on the choke cable. Gotcha. So you use okay. the Harley cable, Harley nut, Makuni spring and plunger. Perfect. Right. Oh, one DX. This, this one will throw it on. It's got the CV. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, this air filter. Bags. Yeah, this should all work. We were kind of surprised at how small the collector was. It's tiny. All right, guys, have fun. Right. Thank all you. Right, see you later. So he told us that back in like the 80s and 90s, this whole rock area was a pond with koi fish in it. And the pond continued over to this side.
Well, that wasn't too far of a ride. These, look, this is El Tijuanense on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. It's TJ style tacos. So we hit up TJ for tacos not too long ago. So let's see how these uh, stack up against real TJ tacos. So Makuni's a football throwaway. We crossed the street basically, rode the diners over, and Juan has had this taco spot before by himself, I think you came yeah, here. Yeah, they're pretty fire. And he's like, homie, we gotta go try this spot. I wanna take you over there. Look at the line, bro. What do you think, dude? Guy in the parking lot, he seemed like he was a taco connoisseur. He's like, you gotta have the cheek. I'm not gonna drink that. Why not? I haven't had any else. Uh, we're gonna order one for the table. What did you call it? Cabeza. Cabeza. That means head. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get some cabeza. <laughs> I don't think that's, can order it in English though. <laughs> can I get some head? So they got the trompo burner, but it's not running. Is that all of it? Thank you. Hey, sorry, buddy. These are the media tacos. All right, the sauce is bomb, but it makes me sweat. Like I will struggle. Oh, bro, you just yeah. I got the cheek. That's what the guy told me yeah, to eat. Cheap. I'm not as fired up, but I'll try it. That's a but that's a biryak is a taco, so it has cheese in it. Ah. Look at that. Cabeza, going for it. Really tender. It almost like tastes like you're eating fat. Birria. Cheek, like as a kid. Never have cabeza. All right, then you have to eat half or the one bite. Not a fan. If it's tender, I just don't like that. It's not a fan of the flavor. I would say it's lower on my list. When you get a pastor off the trompo, the right amount of salsa, it tastes like refreshing. It's not like super greasy. You know, the meat feels, tastes good, the salsa tastes good. And so when I came here, kind of hoping to get a trompo style yeah. taco. And this kind of like rivals to me, El Tapatio. Like the one El we went Tap? to. Yeah, like. Uh, I think this one's better than El Tap. For sure it didn't have a trompo, but we also kind of went off the scale with the freaking exotic meat with the cheek i didn't like the, like i would never order the cheek again i'm not mad i ordered it but i would never get cheek taco myself it was just too soft and it didn't have enough texture to it yeah. i kind of like when my steak is medium rare but then has like a gristle char like for me it's been like a pretty safe spot i haven't tried anything else like any of the shit you, we tried today we tried the the queso birria that, but i thought that was good, good but, but again it was just like super greasy right like i held that thing up it was just like dripping like a new york style pizza yeah i'm not rushing back here i would give this place like a five or six out of ten myself i think for me it was like six seven ish but okay. it's a safe it's a safe bet if there's like nothing else around i would for sure i've been here like four or five times we're gonna go get oil because the thing we never even checked the oil to be honest we should be checking the oil changing the oil it even have yeah we never even looked at the oil so change the oil put a new oil filter on it put the carb on it throw a pipe on it and see how she runs. And we did put fresh gas in it. Hopefully we can fix the popping and spitting and the stalling that ones. I get it. I know you guys have said, you can make a CV work good. Chances are the CV is 22 years old. It would need a full cleaning, a full rebuild is yeah. my guess. Time and effort to do that on the CV is very similar to just popping a new Makuni on. And the people that I go and get my bikes tuned, Alan McBee, you saw him in the last one. He's very familiar with Makunis. He has all the jets, he likes tuning them. Sometimes to get your bike working the best is also working with your mechanic or your tuner and what they're the most experienced with. Final nut check. It's a penetrating lube, bro. Come on, another one! Belts are made for pants, brother. <laughs> Suck, bang, blow. Yeah! Come to Papa. <laughs> Woo! Thing sounds good! 